So hey everyone, welcome to this special series of College Dunia, where we take interviews of all those students who have converted India's top B schools. Today we have Radhika uh, from FMS batch of 22 to 24. Radhika, welcome to the show. Welcome to the series. Yeah, hi Chaitanya. Glad to yeah. be here. So Radhika, without wasting any time, I'll jump straight away to the very first question. So could you please give us a brief profile background uh, before you actually joined the FMS, right? Sure. So about my background, I have done my engineering, and it had been three years since I had been working at TCS. Okay. And uh, prior to that, I mean, during my schooling and also, I had a nine-nine-eight kind of a profile. Okay. So I mean, fairly okayish if I talk yeah. about good, maybe if I talk about the conversion rates and all. And also, I had work ex of approximately three years, and I was an engineer, so that I could not say uh, hmm. because of the diversity part. So I was an engineer. Right. So, uh, Radhika, got it. So, what was your uh, CAT percentile, if if you don't mind me asking? Yeah, it's ninety nine point six five overall. Ninety nine point six five. So, uh, Radhika, with that brilliant percentile, you must have shortlisted many good colleges, right? But I want to ask you, on what basis did you shortlist? Like, if you shortlisted FMS, on what basis did you choose to shortlist FMS? So, what were the okay, other colleges? Okay, so FMS. Was my first choice, I okay. would say so, because it had been a long time uh, since I had been working already. Right. So if I talk about like going with the colleges, I do not actually right now wanted to take a very big, uh, as in you know, uh, take a the ROI that FMS offers, right. of course. So that will not be offered by the other B schools. So that is one of the foremost reasons why I went ahead with FMS. Got it. So my top criteria for FMS was the ROI that it offers. And the fact that it is the marketing campus of the country, so the placements were at par with uh, when I compared it with the A, B, C, the Holy Trinity, and with all Blackie colleges. In fact, the placements were at par. Also, given my profile, I found that I'll be a better fit at FMS rather than maybe going to some other college. Uh, right. So you just mentioned the Holy Trinity. So why did not you go to the Holy Trinity all? Uh, so uh, as like uh, at my stage because I had a three year of working, so for me, I could have taken a career leap in my career as well, and yeah. the MBA was the other option. Hmm. So I just had to choose between the two, and then when I was going through the you know if I'm choosing MBA, then I just wanted that it happens at an ROI which is fairly okay. good enough. I'm investing my two years as well, and FMS was offering me everything that I wanted from a B school, so that is why I. Perfect, Radhika. Perfect. So, Radhika, my next question may haunt the CAT aspirants for the rest of the two years during the B school. So, why MBA, Radhika? Why MBA for you? Why MBA? So, this is one of the answers everyone would uh, be writing right now when the SOPs will be submitted. Yeah. So, why MBA? What I believe, uh, it's a very, I mean, a personal question sort of. For every person, it will be different. Right. For me, the issue, the reason for why MBA, I was working in an SD room. Eventually, I would have become a manager or something, but that would have taken time. So, what I wanted uh, initially when I joined MBA was to become, I mean, product manager was my focus number one, mm-hmm. just to fast track that career growth path and to uh, sometime enter into a managerial position. I had to get an MBA done. I did not want to do an executive MBA, and that I was very sure about. So, mm-hmm. the other part that was left was to do an MBA right away, and I wanted to do it in college, to go to the college for two years and do it. and right. that is why mba for me so for me it was a career progression to enter into managerial to understand the business aspect because i was only into software development mm-hmm. to get a holistic picture i needed to go and do an mba right perfect perfect radhika so uh, radhika 99.65 percentile right so how much time did it take you to actually hit that 99 uh, percentile mark uh, so if i talk about maybe more Second all, uh, like honestly speaking, 99 was something that I had never. Uh, 99, I not crossed that 99 barrier, okay. and I was really not expecting on the cat day as well. I used to cross 95, so that was all right, but never that 99 mark. Hmm. So uh, after maybe giving all the mocks, the one thing that stood out as a learning for me is that mocks are generally difficult, and hmm. one should not benchmark themselves using those mocks. So hmm. I know people who used to consistently hit a 99 over there. and then they couldn't do it maybe on the cat day so all that matters for an aspirant should be the cat day so no matter however the mock performance would have been up till this point or uh, how much the candidate thinks that they know or expectations and all 
nothing matters the only thing that matters is how do you perform on that day how much can you keep yourself calm on that day right perfect and uh, radhika when did you actually start preparing for the cat was it in 2021 only or was it before 2021 or something it was uh, since i told i had a 3 year work ex so mm-hmm. every year i used to just think that i'll be giving uh, taking cat okay. this year but i was never doing it seriously right so actual preparation happened just during that one year of uh, 2021 and prior to that i had uh, no such uh, proper preparation i would say so it was just some somewhere in the back of my mind so i used to read and all because that is one thing that uh, maybe vrc uh, will stand out because of that so reading was very consistent since a few years but other than that quants and dilr i had not as such practiced for uh, the past years that was the only year and i would say approx 5 months because it started for me from proper preparations maybe around june july so july to right. november june to november sort of uh, window right right so you're saying that you seriously started preparing for 5 months like from june right so we have heard this before also but according to you radhika what is that one most important thing that it took you to actually cross that 99 percentile mark like was it your seriousness towards your studies was it your consistency was it your discipline what was it what was it for you i will totally agree to the fact that it is consistency okay. so there will be days when you'll score very low there were days when i had a negative score in okay. one of the sections so there will be such days and uh, consistently you might be hitting a low score as well so not giving up the resilience part of it and the consistency part that no matter what you are doing some things every day like if you have right. thought you will do these 10 qa you will solve you'll solve them or you just have to analyze a mock you'll analyze it no matter uh, how bad that mock went or what your percentile is or you are on the verge of giving up because your mock scores are not at all getting up still if you're just doing it so resilience that the will to come back and give a mock every day even if it's not going good and consistency that you're doing it regularly no matter how little but you're doing it regularly so these are the two things that i feel stands out in the cat preparation sir perfect radhika and uh, radhika i know for a fact that for 2021 the scores were released around december around the first week of december so for mm-hmm. you when did you start preparing for the gdpa preparation that is also i think one of the key components of the cat uh, aspirants journey yeah so uh, the serious preparation for gdpa began in january so okay. it was not when the scores came out okay. it was when the calls came out Got because uh, like i was just waiting let let the calls also come and then i'll prepare right. when i knew that there will be calls but that seriousness was not kicking in right. so once the calls came out that time was the time when i started preparing very seriously for gdp so i did take a few like um, online help was always there hmm. and uh, i did give a few mock pis also so two to three okay. mock pis so that if something is going wrong a mentor could actually point that out and let me know that uh, where can i improve so Got that was there so uh, uh, radhika could you mention us some of your sources for gdp preparation if there were any uh, sources the first and foremost like in general reading news so reading okay. the newspapers because that gives you a lot of information and gdp hmm. is do revolve around how much current affairs do hmm. you know so that was one of the biggest things then there was uh, because i took a particular coaching institute hmm. like mock pi so they gave me material as well again okay. that material was entirely current affairs and also basic knowledge because i'm not from a finance background hmm. so for me having a little bit of finance knowledge would have helped out so there was uh, knowledge about very basic things like just knowing what are assets what are liabilities knowing those mm. equations in finance and all so those kind of uh, material which will be very easily found online if not any standard coaching material will also be letting you uh, delve into those topics right got it and uh, radhika now jumping straight away towards the gdp experience so how was your gd slash vat experience <laughs> so a uh, gd slash vat experience i'll uh, tell the vat was held for i guess i am uh in the vat uh, has this vat uh, part so essay writing and bangalore also has this hmm. so bangalore has it on the metal platform as far as i remember so it's an online one hmm. but it's proctored so you get a topic you have to 
write a very short sort of an essay and submit it that was a vad for bangalore topics are also not very out of the blue so something very standard which people can write about in general mm. for ahmedabad it's like you have to it's not exactly vad it's awt analytical, analytical writing test for uh, ahmedabad so what happens is that is that uh, for me it happened in a virtual conference center so they gave us a sheet of paper wherein say a case sort of studies mm. written you have to analytically analyze that uh, maybe some a few questions are also given you mm. have to give your reasoning as to what is going wrong or your views about the matter that is what the awt was then uh, gds were i guess entirely scrapped and it did not give a single gd for all the interviews okay. that i had and then there were pis as well most of my pis in fact all of my pis were online other than fms pi so fms has this pi round on campus so you have to actually come yeah. to the fms campus and give the pi for all other pis it's a online round that is uh, for all other i would uh, be i'm talking about again abc and lki all of them had okay. an online pi round right got it and uh, so you mentioned radhika there was no gd round right so do you remember what was your vat uh, topic for i am bangalore or uh, if like uh, it was about education in schools like uh, should okay. maybe it be penalized or not if you're not scoring well and that kind of a very general topic which people can write about so that was my vat topic and uh, radhika so how do you prepare for such topics right like for example if you get a topic that you are completely unaware about but unaware. you have to write so how do you approach that topic hmm. <clears throat> uh what i would say is that the preparation should be such for gdp that there should be no topics that are very okay. very much uh, you are unaware about point one still it can happen that hmm, right. you get a topic which you are completely unaware about so in that case what you can do best is that uh, there are keywords in the topic hmm. so maybe using those keywords like there can be a very uh, a very a word which you have never heard about Hmm. say uh, for example moonlighting can be a topic hmm. now it might have if you are again reading the news you'll know what moonlighting is all hmm. about but right. say if you have never read the news then writing about moon and light will actually make no sense hmm. so i would not say that reading about the bush helps here so a little right. bit of knowledge is required but uh, if if suppose that top moonlighting but the top topic understanding that what moonlighting is out so hmm. in those sort of topics you can go ahead Radhika, write think... down your views from what it happened yeah. bangalore does give you a topic and uh, awt is in andavad now you told me that uh, if there is a topic which are completely unaware about hmm. right. so like i told that uh, your preparation should be such that you are mostly not completely unaware about a topic hmm. and just in case it happens that you are unaware about a topic then you just pick up the keywords that you can find from the sentence Right. try to use them when you're writing your essay and uh, at the end you probably make sense like uh, if it is not a one word topic like i told moonlighting is hmm. not the only word that they've given you but they've given you that when an employee works in an uh, other job as well and moonlights then do you think it is ethical or not in okay. that case do make use of common sense and go ahead with writing what you can right so perfect ratika and jumping straight away to the offline interview to the offline fms interview so tell us about how was your uh, fms experience how was your interview experience with fms okay so about the fms interview experience uh, it's a very smooth one day process okay. what happens is that you report at the starting of the day uh, then the interview entirely is very short like okay. it will not go beyond 15 to 20 minutes at okay. max because a large number of candidates that they have to interview and uh, just five days that they keep for the interview slot so it will happen at a very very fast pace now how it goes on is that when you enter they give you an extempore topic mm, right. so this is where it starts from you get a topic you have to speak about it for about a minute mm. and then the panel will ask very generic questions about yourself right and that is how, uh, that is after that the interview will go about with current affairs and mm. how much knowledge you have in your subject and your past mm. history right. so that is how my interview was Okay, so uh, Radhika, uh, you talked about extempore, right? So, what was your extempore uh, topic for FMS interview? My topic was that my first day in New Delhi or Delhi, maybe, because I told them that I happened to come here for the first time, uh, right, alone, and for giving an interview. So, what happens is that they pick up things from your life in general, what okay. I feel, and then give you a topic based on that. 
so it happened for my batchmates so one of my batchmates is uh, her name is nena and okay. next tempo topic she got was okay. eyes eyes so got they it. just somehow maybe relate uh, things like that and give extra tempo topics right perfect and radhika what were uh, some of the specific questions that were asked to you in the fms interview mm-hmm. uh, so my interview revolved a uh, lot around my work etc and all so a few okay. questions that were asked to me were about how was my work at ecs mm-hmm. they also did ask me about what my dream company was and why that was my dream company mm-hmm. again because i came from the house of the tatas i did mm-hmm. mention that tata administrative services is going to be one of my dream mm-hmm. companies and that is how it went about okay and uh, so how many panelists were there in the interview uh in general you will be having two panelists per interview round that is uh, how they should do it so okay. in general they are the teachers of the institute itself okay and uh, that is it two panelists per round at max you can get three but three is an out here so two panelists two panelists fine and uh, radhika was there like you talked about that they picked uh, from the specific topic that you came to the new delhi first uh, for the first time so mm-hmm. did they ask uh, pre beforehand that were about given an introduction did, it, did yeah. they did they take a paper yes. and something yeah. Uh, no, they did not took a paper or something. Yeah. But when you enter the room, a brief introduction about yourself, and you can just talk about how was your day and all. And okay. after that, they start with the extempore. So they get a brief idea about you from that few, you know, lines of introduction that you give. Right. And the topic can be given then and there based on what did you say. So in a way, you can maybe steer the conversation, get the topics that you want to. So right. that does happen in a next extempore round at MPS. Right. Perfect. and how was how long was your your interview radhika okay so 10 to 11 minutes is what i felt it was like i could not exactly time it but it does not go beyond that much so was it a stress interview or something uh, it's not a stress interview because uh, they are very friendly and lenient people but because you're giving it for a big institute like fms the stress right. automatically builds up so it. it was just that i was maybe stressed on that day because it was my dream college hmm. but the interview is not at all a stress interview they try to calm you talk to you very naturally not okay. at all a stress interview okay and so thank you radhika that that was it uh, we wanted it to be short and crisp and thank you so much so uh, to all the viewers we hope we were able to add some value to your uh, cat preparation and now we thank radhika for joining us thank you so much radhika thanks to them yeah yeah bye radhika